All right, wishing all of you a very good day. First of all, let me take the opportunity to thank the Malaysian Society of Pharmacology and Physiology and also the organizing team of this 34th scientific meeting. It is indeed a great pleasure to meet all of the experts around the areas. So without further ado, let me start my presentation. Okay. So today I'm going to discuss on the uh, variability in pain tolerance of the administration of standardized spectrum decoction. All right. Uh, so this is a clinical study which I've been performed during my studies in uh, University of Science of Malaysia. Okay, and currently I'm an assistant lecturer in Monash School of Pharmacy. All right, so let me take through of what are we going to see today. First of all, I'm going to discuss on my objective, what are my primary and secondary objective. I'm going to discuss on the methodology section in terms of uh, decoction preparation, randomized control trials and pain assessment. And from this methodology, I will go on to my result analysis where we'll compare and contrast the relationship between the methadone concentration and pain tolerance, whether there's a clear cut representation or relationship. And I will move on to my conclusion, whether the objectives were achieved or not. All right, so let's go to the introduction and the background of this study. First, Kratom, the plant itself, okay? Kratom or Kratom in Malaysia has a long history of folk medicine in use in Southeast Asia and has recently gained popularity in Western countries. Okay, the use of it is mainly in native part of Southeast Asia where the natives use it, the rural communities use it for self-medication. And now it has been gaining uh, popularity in Western countries because of its uh, self-medication, all right? Nitrogenin is a principal alcohol reported to be responsible for Kratom's therapeutic action. Why? It is because of the abundance and the major constituents of the alkaloids are mainly nitrogenin. Pain relief is many, among many self-reported beneficial Kratom effects. Why is because it is binding to the opioid receptors in the brain, thereby it is giving an anti nociceptive action. This is because, uh, this is why uh, Kratom has perceived to be in a controversial plant in Malaysia because it is binding to the opioid receptors and it is giving uh, addictive properties if it's taken in a, a different amount, large amount. So uh, if you see the problem statement here, we will talk on the pain relief among humans, especially in Southeast Asia by self-treatment. They have been uh, taking as a self-medication for pain relief. Analgesic properties have also been reported on the metagenin, mainly uh, on animal models where there is uh, proven to have an uh, analgesic property. And they have also studies being done on qualitative interviews and surveys among custom users to perceive and know what are the properties and why are they taking it for. So all of this has led to our clinical study to check on the pain tolerance and the variabilities of it, all right? So here we are scientifically accessing the variability of the pain relief effects, which is coming to our primary objective in Kratom decoction by performing a randomized double band placebo control study. And then we are doing a secondary, we are having a secondary objective where we are comparing and contrasting the relationship between Plasma concentration of metagenin and pain tolerance. We want to see whether there is a correlation and there is a representation between these two. Okay, so moving on to our methodology. Over here, we have, um, we are starting with the decoction preparation of kratom and placebo. Here, we will prepare a standardized kratom and placebo decoction. Okay, we choose only red pain kratom leaf because it is reported to have analgesic properties compared to the other green in a tooth shaped leaf, all right? And then uh, we are doing a content analysis to fix a dose of 1.6 mg per kg. This is uh, why, this is because uh, to have a safe dose margin in human subjects. And then we are mimicking the same level, the taste level and appearance by preparing a placebo decoction, all right? So moving on, we're having a randomized control trials where we will report participants following the inclusion and exclusion criteria. So they will get admitted to our study site. It's a two-day study, and we will always check the vital signs assessments where we will check the blood pressure, body temperature, and also our clinical opioid withdrawal skill to check whether they have any withdrawal symptoms. And we will go through the pain assessment. Here is where we check the pain assessment, and we also do uh, analysis on the metagenin content by taking a blood. This is being done pre-dose and post-dose. Pre-dose is before the drink injection, and post-dose one hour after the drink injection, all right? We have three sequences of drink injection that I will explain during my result section. And then we will have a, a part where we assess the variabilities where we will do a PKPD modeling by comparing and contrasting the relationship, all right? 
So over here, we have the result analysis. We give three sequences, placebo, placebo, ketum, ketum, placebo, placebo. K denotes the ketum and P denotes the placebo. If you see uh, among these four diagrams, there is no clear cut representation between the pain tolerance and also the uh, uh, plasma concentration of methylamine. After, if you see ketum is given at uh, seven post dose hour, Okay, I mean, seven hour after giving two sequence of placebo, there's an increase in the plasma concentration of metagenic. Of course, there's an increase in the pain tolerance, but after that, there is a decrease in the pain tolerance level also. So even if you see the next diagram, um, ketum, placebo, placebo, the first dose will be ketum. Okay, there will be an increase in the plasma concentration of metagenic, and then there is a decrease in the uh, uh, plasma concentration of metagenic in the plateau phase. There is an increase in the pain tolerance, but there is a zigzag movement in the pain tolerance. There is no clear cut representation whether the pain tolerance is decreased when the metrogenine uh, concentration is decreased in the plasma. So it is not having the same uh, diagrammatic representation if you notice from the diagram itself. So large individual differences in pain responses illustrated by the 95% uh, confidence interval here. All right. So why? Over here, we having all this is because number one, the population, it's a small sample size, okay? Because of the, uh, it's the challenge of recruiting Katum subjects, okay? We only managed to recruit 26 uh, study subjects. There is a variation in body weight, in body mass index, that's one thing. And also there is a variation uh, in terms of uh, MG uh, content, nitrogenin content. There's a high baseline level because these are chronic Katum users. There's a high baseline level of Katum use. If you see in the previous diagram, they start with a, a thousand microgram per liter, which means they have been consuming kratom for a very long time, and that's why they're having this high baseline level. And they could also be the role of other alkaloids responsible for the pain therapeutic action in terms of binding affinity towards the opioid receptors. So thereby we are deducing that these are the variables that will be responsible for the pain tolerance. So moving on to our conclusion, if you can see there is no significant relationship between nitrogenine plasma concentration and pain tolerance from the diagram itself, you know, the role of other alkaloids in alkaloids may also be responsible to modulate the pain response. So from here, we can deduce that, we can conclude that there should be other future studies to um, discuss on the pain tolerance level with other alkaloids to see what are the other alkaloids is it having a corresponding relationship and correlation with the pain tolerance level. So these are my references. Uh, I would like to acknowledge my supervisors and co-authors here, it together with my collaborators. Thank you, and I would really appreciate if there's some questions and answers and feedback. Thank you very much.